Okay. Yeah, welcome to my talk about uh, plausible reasoning um, with controversial axioms. Um, we use default logics for that. I'm uh, Thomas Schambach, and I will now present you joint work that I did with uh, colleagues from uh, WSL, uh, Rolf Grütte and Bettina Waldvogel, and uh, colleagues from Bari, Nicola Fanisi and um, Claudia D'Amato, and um, last but not least, Avi Bernstein from the University of Zurich. Um, this is a position paper, as you might know, so I will not be able to present all the underlying methods in uh, too much detail. Uh, however, um, it happens that I will present some of uh, the methods that we used here in another talk on the ontology dynamics workshop, which is taking place tomorrow. You might be wondering um, what uh, forest snow and landscape has to do with um, semantic web ontologies and things like that. Well, um, research at uh, WSL is roughly categorized in uh, three topics. We have, um, for example, create and maintain the Swiss National Forest Inventory. Uh, other groups try to figure out uh, how to predict and prevent the occurrence of avalanches. Um, people from my research unit mostly deal with uh, monitoring of endangered species, but also special planning. And um, all these people have one thing in common. We produce tons of data. And um, these tons of data is um, usually um, used not within a single uh, research project scope, but it should be uh, maintained in a sustainable way. So we use um, ontologies for data integration or data warehousing, so to say, for annotating uh, data to uh, be able to reuse it again. And therefore, we have the um, usual problem that uh, we have on the one hand the uh, knowledge engineers and on the other hand the domain experts. And um, the domain experts usually have the detailed domain knowledge that we as a knowledge engineer lack. Um, the knowledge engineers um, well produce a consistent uh, knowledge base which most of the colleagues that I have who are geographers and biologists do not. And uh, even more, when I talk to my colleagues about uh, ontologies, they uh, look at me as a bear from Mars. Well, I'm not from Mars, but um, the problem about um, what, what um, is with um, having domain experts putting their knowledge in a formal way like ontologies is um, you have to um, build a system that is you to use as, as easy as putting on a hat. And they really don't care about uh, things like ontologies, and they care about their very knowledge that is uh, put into the system. So it's our job to build a conflict-tolerant system and uh, revise this from time to time. And we, well, we always think at WSL about um, this, like stated in this little comic, it is a, it is a system that might uh, contain conflicts and might seem contradictions to the outside, but as long as this works, um, it's, it's good. So we have some um, desired properties that uh, such a system should have. Um, it should be coherent. It should uh, keep all the information that you put originally into it. Um, we will not change the uh, formalism for knowledge representation. It should work automatically so um, that we should not have to revise it too often. And uh, it should preserve most of the inferred information as much as possible. And we require um, the first properties to be met strictly, and um, the second ones are subject to optimization. And as you might, might um, see from there, if we um, force, for example, to keep all the original information in the case of uh, conflicts, or when some conflict is um, occurring in the form of an unsatisfiable concept, um, then we, the best thing is we can do is to keep as many of the inferences as possible. So we will not be able to keep all of them. We therefore uh, introduced the um, so-called uh, delta transformation in a paper before. I will just uh, go quickly through what that is. Well, we partition the so-called set of uh, trouble-causing axioms. We keep the non-trouble-causing axioms in a separate T-box. Um, we do the partitioning without any additional uh, satisfiability checks. That uh, is uh, something we have performed already by uh, computing the set of trouble-causing axioms. Um, we optimize regarding the uh, inferences that we lose, and we optimize regarding the remaining conflicts. And um, the last one, the optimization regarding the remaining conflicts in the system that I'm presenting, 
um, is the subject of the paper that we submitted to this workshop. Okay, what is the uh, unsatisfiability splitting? Well, what we do is we call, compute the justifications, that is the minimal set of axioms that cause a conflict. In the um, upper right corner, you will see a uh, um, symbolic um, representation of an ontology that we use uh, for domain experts how to, uh, to express them, for example, uh, taxonomies. The black arrows are subclass inclusions and uh, the uh, red arrows are disjoints. And um, as you can clearly see, the uh, set uh, B is a subclass of A and C is a subclass of B and C disjoint with A um, infers or is sufficient to infer that uh, C is unsatisfiable and um, the same holds uh, for these axioms for D. And if we take away one of these axioms, the um, entailment that C is unsatisfiable, or in that case D is unsatisfiable, does not hold anymore. And uh, what we now uh, did is we just split up these um, justification sets in two parts. And um, these um, splitting um, is then used for uh, computing the partitions that we use in default logics. This is an example uh, where all this leads to. Um, the partitions are uh, marked in blue. And um, what we mean by, by a partition is we separate the uh, axioms that we have into um, separate sets, so to say in separate t-boxes, do reasoning on these separate t-boxes separately. All these separate t-boxes um, are coherent within their very scope. They would not be coherent if we considered all the axioms altogether. That's the trick. And um, we get the partitions by uh, applying the partitioning scheme from uh, Lehmann's default logics, which was extended by a separate, what we call universal t-box. So um, axioms that uh, can be considered as, as to hold under, under any case. Um, these are marked in yellow. And this extension of the universal t-box was presented in uh, the scope of probabilistic description logics introduced by Thomas Lukasiewicz in 2006, I think. And um, we now obtain these three partitions. And each partition is considered together with the universal t-box. And um, the uh, first optimization that we did uh, is that we only have to consider one of the axioms from the um, sets that I showed you before for these partitions. Um, in the original version, you would have to put all these axioms in it, or in other words, you would mark all more of these axioms in blue and less of these axioms in yellow. So what we uh, can improve is we can actually remove some of the axioms from the partitions into the universal t-box, which effectively means um, we add them to all the partitions, and you can easily check that none of these partitions infers any concept to be unsatisfiable. This is um, non-deterministic, so we might, for uh, a t-box that we process with this schema, end up in many solutions, and we have to find an optimal solution. And the, um, the first um, approach that we did was just assessing or evaluating these uh, t-boxes that might occur from this procedure by counting the inferences that we lose, and then prefer the solution which loses less inferences. We lose inference because we uh, consider axioms separately, so we can't avoid losing inferences. In fact, we lose the inference that some concept is unsatisfiable, so that is the good point, but we might also lose inferences um, that are um, not subject to, to be lost. And um, yes, there's another example of um, how we can um, can um, do the optimization step. And the, the problem about this um, optimization step is, mm, just a second. I think I'm now stuck in a universal loop. Yes. Um, so to, to sum up, we uh, identify the causes for conflicts in the first step by computing the so-called root justifications. We ignore conflicts by the partitioning scheme for Lehmann's default logics, and we find optimal solutions by 
applying this minimal transformation schema. This sounds uh, good so far, but uh, this counting inferences as the performance measures uh, might be a false friend. If you see uh, this um, solution that might emerge from the, from the example, um, the resulting um, default T-box infers that uh, D is a subclass of B, and it also infers that D is disjoint with B. Within the reasoning process, this is not a problem, because these two inferences uh, emerge from two different partitions. If we had default logic semantics, which we don't apply here because it's, uh, for our case, much too, uh, too complex, um, we could avoid this and uh, have only, only one of these inferences. However, well, in, in our case, as we just consider um, the, the whole knowledge base as the union of the single partitions, um, we still have this conflict present. And if we instantiate it, it's, nonetheless, it's not a problem. So we won't have an inconsistency. That's the, the weird thing about this. But it's also not very nice if I have to explain to a domain expert that uh, something is uh, rendered as a concept and it's, it's complement at the same time. Well. There is a second solution to, to this problem, which um, does not infer the um, first entailment, which is in our case good, because we don't have the conflict in the result anymore, which is in the other case bad when just counting inferences, because we have one inference less. That means just counting inferences, we would um, choose the first, the bad solution. And um, so we had to think of something else. And we came up with that the performance measure should make use of the, the quality of the inferences that we preserve. So we cannot work on the structure alone. And uh, the second proposition that we do is we have to take into account instantiations because this is the, the very thing that people are working with in the end. And um, our solution that, that we proposed in uh, this paper is that we want to assess the quality of a possible solution by the information content. And the information content in computer science is usually measured by the entropy. And um, so what we think of uh, would be the best solution to overcome this ambiguity or uncertainty is to choose solutions based on uh, an information content measure. We made also a proposal for that. And um, we consider entropy. Um, regarding a probab probability mass function on axioms, because we work on uh, t-boxes, and t-boxes consist of axioms. And uh, we give a definition for this probability mass function in turn um, on the assertions that they have on a specific a-box. And um, this assertion counting um, has the idea that if I have a conflict, then I have many assertions for one concept and its complement. So considering um, this as a random variable, the distribution is more similar to a, a uniform distribution. And if I have a default t-box, so a solution that does not contain this conflict, then um, the assertions are either to a concept or its complement, and so the um, consideration as a random variable would not be uh, or would be dissimilar to a uniform distribution. That's more or less the idea that we had behind. There exist other evaluation measures, um, but they have mostly been designed for completely different purposes. Um, usually these um, information content uh, based uh, evaluation measures are used for ontology modernization. So to, to measure how good the separation of an ontology into submodules was. And uh, we nonetheless need to evaluate and compare this to the measure that we proposed. So to conclude, um, we are indeed able to, to perform reasoning on ontologies that contain controversial axioms that lead to unsatisfiable concepts. We can keep all the explicitly stated information, so we don't have to delete anything that the domain expert put in. Um, the solution to this uh, task is non-deterministic, and uh, we have to hence apply an optimization process. The conflicts, in turn, are ignored during reasoning, but they may still exist 
in the in the resulting knowledge base and um, so we not only have to uh, optimize regarding the um, number of inferences invalidated but also to the number of conflicts that are still present. Um, we show that this method requires a more sophisticated measure than simply counting inferences and um, existing methods are not really suitable or were not designed for doing an evaluation task like this so we proposed an entropy based measure that um, calculates entropy on the axioms on a, of a default T-box, so a solution, um, which is grounded by an instantiation, so an A-box. Future work is to uh, improve scalability. This uh, approach is, um, the complexity of this approach is um, dominated by the computation of uh, justifications. So we have to find an efficient way how to maintain justifications, which is out of scope of this context. Um, we have to investigate further performance measures and uh, do a evaluation on, uh, with competing performance measures. We nonetheless have to do a real world evaluation so we do not yet know whether real users really like the method that we uh, want to present them with which is an important thing because if they dislike it you can just throw everything into the trash can. And um, we might apply this approach also to other domains like ontology mapping. In the original context, we applied it to ontology evolution, but it um, can easily be, be modified to also work for ontology mapping. So that's it for the moment. Thank you for your attention. that is that uh, the data sources that need to be annotated you can do this within the domain you can do this you can you can learn things um, the problem is interconnecting different domains so we have for example a domain of political processes that are connected to um, data from um, environmental observations um, we also have um, um, data that was collected in the scope of um, spatial planning the problem about that is all these data is, is, well, they are semantically connected because people that work with it have uh, or use it for decision processes. And um, when you're involved in such a decision process, you usually have to ask 20 people where you can find the data. And then you have to ask 40 people uh, that de deliver you the data. And you can imagine that this is a very time consuming process. Um, the problem is really the interconnection between these different sources. So it's not, not building the domain ontology. That's, that is a task that can be performed easily. But because these sources are very heterogeneous. But I mean, did you at least think about examples where this approach would be helpful? Yeah. Even if it's not real or from real data or anything. But yes. But a few examples that, OK, this usually happens. And this is how we would benefit from this approach. Um, what usually happens is um, we have one of these uh, things um, that, that's occurred when, when constructing uh, an ontology based on um, observations for, for swamp land. So we have many people that, that go into the field and study swamp lands. And um, when they try to uh, formalize their observations, they usually um, express things in, in an exceptional way which is default logics are capable of, of, uh, of handling. So for example, it, it al it's always, or in 90% of the cases, it's, it's, you can break it down to the, uh, to the flying birds and penguin example. That's, that's, that's just the standard pattern of a conflict that uh, the domain experts will emerge from. Yes. So we know that it, there is a need for, for avoiding conflicts. And um, the problem is, you have to, to give people a, a very, very easy method to, uh, to, not, um, to not show them these conflicts to the outside. So um, 
as I said, we use this mainly for um, for a kind of data warehousing application, and uh, we rely upon the um, the inference mechanism when we um, use it for for the search process. And so, um, when we when we evolve it, there's there's a need for two things. People like to have their information, or like to see their information at the point they entered it, and um, the system should not delete the things that they entered. We discovered that if we do so, we, we lose the people instantly. So they would just stop using the system. And um, this made us just think of, well, what, what can we do to, to easy up the process? The second thing also related to your question is that um, we are about more or less 70 to 80 uh, domain experts and um, three knowledge engineers <laughs> who do the, the, uh, the, the um, ontology construction is usually a part-time job. So that's, that, that, that's the usual problem. So even if you, if you applied learning techniques or, or things like that, you're, you're not capable of, of controlling everything. And when mapping things onto, onto each other, then um, what, what we've not done yet, and then we expect even more conflict to occur. No, it's completely not at all. As long as you have a decidable procedure for finding justifications, you can do anything. Even so, nominals, yes, nominals are we use nominals. Perfect. Well, this is very important. yes. <laughs> so we do not rely upon. But but the, the question is, do you want to have this expressivity because it makes uh, the finding of justifications of course, yeah. very hard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know. Thank you very much. Again.